Evil Knievel, whose real name was Robert Craig Knievel, was an American motorcycle daredevil who captivated audiences with his death-defying stunts. Clad in his trademark star-spangled red, white, and blue jumpsuits, Knievel made more than 300 jumps during his career and claimed to have broken nearly every bone in his body. In 1968, Evil Knievel performed perhaps his most famous stunt, a spectacular jump over the fountains at Caesars Palace Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, United States. However, during the landing, he fractured his skull and left him comatose for a month. Knievel recovered and continued his daredevil exploits, which made him an international icon in the 1970s. He was a celebrity with flair. We at Typewriter Minutes recently came across a red, white, and blue celebrity that came to fame in the 1960s and that has a little extra flair. This is Eli with Typewriter Minutes, and today we're doing a for sale video review of this 1964 Sears celebrity, which we've nicknamed Evil Knievel. So I grew up in the 1970s, and Evil Knievel was very popular back then. He got his start in the 70s, actually not long after this typewriter was made in 1964. I think he, his first public debut was in 66 or so, and he became more and more famous. But his color scheme on his outfit uh, was white with blue and red stripes. So this uh, is why we've nicknamed it. Knievel Knievel, that and the artistic script typeface, which you'll see on the typing test, gives it a little bit of extra flair. So this um, Smith Corona we've had for really just a couple weeks and decided that it was going to go to the front of the queue because I just loved script machines and really like the body style on these. We've done a few other video reviews of machines similar to this and I love the angles on this. I like the smooth paint. Not that I don't like the crinkle paint on Silent Supers, but those are harder to clean and keep clean with a nice smooth paint. These are fairly easy to clean. So we've had this thing completely apart, gave it the full chemical clean. It was pretty grody on the inside, like most of the typewriters that we got. And Worked on it yesterday and today, and did a little bit of tuning and adjusting, and it is ready to go. So just a quick um, review. This thing has a dedicated one and exclamation mark. Over here, you have the uh, ribbon um, reverse switch, if you want to do it manually. This does take eyelets to, um, for the ribbon if you want the automatic ribbon reverse to work, and we've already done that. Here's your touch control with a cool little red ball, and it makes a little bit of difference. It's, it's very subtle between heavy and light, but it does make a little bit of difference. Uh, one, things I like, one thing that I like about this series of typewriters that Smith Kona made, they made uh, the Cutlass and a few other variations, a nice big space bar. Unlike the Hermes 3000, which my thumb hits the front of the frame when I type, this just has a nice big space bar that I really like. It works well with my hands. It's got this cool red, white, and blue stripe across the front with the celebrity name up here. It's got a key set tabulator, set and clear. There's your tab button. Here's your ribbon color selector, and if you'll take a peek in there, Eli, that's one clue that this is a script machine. There's no red dot, so uh, they took the red off, and all you have is stencil, stencil mode, and black because the the typeface is so tall that you can't do a bichrome ribbon, or else it would it would be half red, half black. So you can put a bichrome ribbon if, in it if you want, but it's designed to type across the middle of the ribbon, and we have a solid black ribbon in this one. Here's a quick look at the type basket here. I'll just come up here. You can see it's nice and clean. Our test ribbon was black and red. And so we got a little bit of red ink on the type slugs. But everything's nice and clean. And we'll go ahead and close that. You can see there's a ruler in there with a little peekaboo window. And you can see where you are in the paper scale. I have the tabs set every 10 spaces. But that uh, ruler aligns with the ruler back here on the, uh, the paper tray or the, the paper table. Right here you have a little pop-up eraser table for doing erasers which 
we don't want you to do on machines nowadays because your eraser crumbs fall down on the machine. We'll give this back to Eli. One thing I like is the solid chrome carriage release levers. These don't break, unlike the plastic ones that you find on galaxies that are often cracked or missing. This does have a quick release platen, so the, the back pops out like that. And all you do if you want to release the platen is uh, move the carriage all the way to the right, pull the variable line space knob out, and then lift the back cover. And then this little knob right here, you can see that? Push it that way, and then twist and pull, and the platen comes right out. So it makes it easy for cleaning. You shouldn't have to clean this now because everything's uh, nice and clean, but if you ever had anything jammed in there, and to put it back in, it's kind of the reverse, just carriage still all, all the way to the right, twist until it goes back in, and you're good to go. It does have a nice large paper bale with this giant hook, so that makes it easy to flip up and down. Paper bale rollers are in excellent shape. Push and slide margins for left and right. Here's your, if you'll come on up here, Eli. This is your paper release lever. If you get the paper in there crooked, just lift it up, move your paper around, and flip it back. Overall, the paint is in excellent shape. On the front fenders here, a few little scuffs there, a few scuffs. Um, ooh, get off there. A little bit of goo got on there somehow. A few scuffs on the front, and around here, there's a few scuffs there. A little bit down here by the back slot, but overall the paint is in excellent shape. A few more scuffs over here where somebody I think was banging this against the ribbon cover when it was open. Overall though, the, the white looks really good, other than a few minor scuffs. It has the rabbit ear paper support, so that goes up and down like that. When you put it in the case, make sure to put it down so that it doesn't get bent. You can see if you'll zoom in or get close on this the paint is excellent sears celebrity and then around to the top here eli you got ribbon or the uh, line spacing one two and three right there as i mentioned before this is your variable line spacing so if you pull that out the clicks go away and you can adjust wherever you need to type to on a line or on a form this little guy here does kind of the same thing. If you push that down, also releases the clicks, but that one remembers your line spacing. Uh, like if you're typing H2O and you want to get back to your line. I think I've covered just about everything. We'll take one more look around. I like the the design on these platen knobs. It's just kind of a it's got cool angles to it with these slots in the white, just with the white and the black kind of makes it pop so it's just a really neat design the body panels on this are a lot easier to get off than on the silent super because it's in three pieces these side pieces and this front are separate unlike the unibody silent super that you have to bend a little bit to get off uh, you just take apart the mounting screws on the bottom and then there's a couple yeah, move this over one screw there, one on the other side, and then it's fairly easy to get the body panels off. There's another screw you gotta take out. And then of course you got the screws for the ribbon cover, but overall, fairly easy machine to get apart for cleaning and maintenance. And uh, just an excellent typer, which you'll see in just a moment. Okay, I forgot to show the bottom of the machine. Rubber feet are in excellent shape. Nice and clean on the inside. Again, it was pretty grody when I got it. The keys were actually frozen solid. I could not push them down. There's just, I think, grease in this bottom comb here. Old oil and grease. And then in the segment, uh, got all that flushed out. And it's looking good now. And now for the type test.
There's the line lock, so margin release to get into the margin. Now we'll do a couple lines on black. Typo. I was seeing if Eli would pick up on that joke since it doesn't have red. Okay, we'll go ahead and take a look at the typeface. Looks really good. If you ignore the typos, the output is really nice. I love the typing feel on these. It's very much like the Silent Supers and the earlier Smith Coronas. These have the deeper buttercup keys like you'd see on the Galaxies. But again, for me, I love that nice big space bar. It's just, thumb doesn't have to worry about hitting the front frame. Very excellent typing touch. Couldn't ask for a better machine if you're looking for a script. We forgot to show the tabulator. So I had this set every 10 spaces. This table's kind of wobbly, so pardon the noise. If you want to clear them out, you just hit tab and then hit the clear one at a time. Now if I hit tab, it'll come flying to the left. There's no tab set. You can actually clear them all out at once too if you hit the clear button and then move the carriage, but I just like to do it one at a time. And then to set them, you just hit the set uh, button. So we'll do every 10 spaces. Now let's look at the case. So a lot of times the machine and the case are kind of in the same boat. In this case, they were both sticky and gooey. I mean, this was sticky to the touch when I got it. But it's been uh, cleaned. And it's in excellent shape. Uh, just need a little bit of a rub down and scrubbing. Inside, everything looks good. Has the Sears logo on the handle, and to open and close, you just close this snap shut like that, and then to get it open, just pinch those guys like that. When you close the case, it pushes down on this little piece right there, and then that's what locks the machine in the case on the front side when it's closed. And so when you open it to get the machine out, you have to push this button up. So this is made by Samsonite, I believe. It's aluminum. It's a really durable case. You can see the bottom is in excellent shape. Every now and then you'll see these that are rusted, but this one's in perfect shape. Uh, aluminum feet. Also, at least some type of metal. Maybe aluminum, aluminum or some other type of metal, but the case is in excellent shape. If you're interested in buying this machine, you can contact us directly or the link to the eBay sale will be in the comments. Thank you for watching Typewriter Minutes. Be sure to share, link, like, and subscribe.
Thank <laughs> you.